Hey y'all, welcome to a new week of what's for dinner. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing five delicious budget-friendly meal ideas. So let's start off with this chicken and yellow rice. This night was my husband's birthday and this is the dinner that he requested. It's very nostalgic for him. It was one of his favorite meals that his mom used to make for him. So I'm going to start off by cooking up the chicken. So I have two boneless skinless chicken breasts in my little eight by eight casserole dish. I did pat dry those first with a paper towel. And now I'm just going in and seasoning both sides. Um, I kept the seasoning simple because I didn't want the flavors to overpower the dish. So I'm just sticking to some salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. Now, recently on Pinterest, I came across a new to me method on bacon chicken, and I've done that the last few times, and I have loved the results, so I definitely wanted to include that. So basically, you just top the chicken breast with a small pat of butter, and then take a piece of parchment paper and wrap that around the chicken to really seal in the juices. Bake it at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. While that was in the oven, I went ahead and got my rice started. So this is the yellow rice that we love, and I just simply follow the instructions on the back of the package. So while all of that is going, I'm gonna go ahead and get my mixing bowl ready. So I'm gonna add in one can of cream of chicken soup. I also added in a half of another can. You do not need to do that. I only did it because it was left over from another recipe and I didn't want it to go to waste. I'm also gonna add in an eight ounce container of sour cream. Again, that is optional. It would be good without it, but I just felt like adding it this day. I was just kind of playing around in the kitchen and I know it goes really good in casseroles. So now the chicken is done. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna let this rest for at least five minutes before I cut into it. And around the same time, my rice was done. So I'm just gonna throw that in my mixing bowl. Back to the chicken. You can either cube this up or shred it. I decided to cube it up for this and I just wanted to show y'all how perfectly cooked it is. Look at how juicy, like, it's incredible. So I got the rest of that chopped up into small pieces. I'm going to dump that in on top of the yellow rice. And then I'm just going to simply fold all of that together, making sure all of that chicken and rice is perfectly coated in the cream of chicken sour cream mixture. And now I'm just going to dump that out into a nine by 13 casserole dish that I did spray with some pamphers just to make sure nothing will stick. I'm just taking the back of my spoon and kind of smoothing out the top. And I'm also going to go in with thin little pats of butter and just place it all over the casserole dish. This is one thing that I can never really find like a good recipe for it online. So I was just doing my own thing. I know when I was a child, one of my favorite meals as well was chicken and rice, but my parents would do it with white rice instead of yellow rice, but still really good. And I remember it being like really buttery. So that was my inspiration for that. So I cook that at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. So here's what it looks like when it's done. I did top it with some extra black pepper. And as you can see, that is super like rich and creamy, just how we like it. So I ended up serving this with some slow cooked seasoned green beans. And I also heated up a package of some King's Hawaiian rolls. And we all just really enjoyed this meal. And this is one thing also that the leftovers is just as good. I also made him a Reese's peanut butter cheesecake. This is one of his favorite desserts. And I did make a TikTok video on it showing how I made it step by step. So I will link that in my description box if you're interested. Now, I love me a good Southern style potato salad. That will always be my number one favorite. But this is a close second. It's a cheddar bacon ranch version. And it's definitely one of our favorite summertime side dishes. So it calls for skin on red potatoes. I have three pounds here that I've scrubbed and washed. And I'm just getting those chopped into bite-sized pieces and just throwing it into a large pot of water on the stove as I go. So I'm gonna season this water heavily with salt. That's really important taste-wise with potatoes. And I'm just gonna boil those until they are fork tender. Meanwhile, I'm gonna grab a block of some sharp cheddar cheese and I'm gonna shred that up using my box grater. I don't need the full block. I only need about one and a half cups of shredded cheese, but shredding it yourself definitely upgrades recipes. I'm also going to need a few slices of bacon in the potato salad. So I'm going to go ahead and cook up the full pack because I am going to be serving it with some BLTs. So my favorite method when I have to cook a lot of bacon at one time is definitely in the oven. So I'm just getting all that placed on a cookie sheet. I did have to rearrange it into two rows to make it all fit, but I'm going to cook that at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes. So here I'm straining the water off of my potatoes. You definitely want to let that sit in the sink and let that cool down before you start adding anything to it. 
I also wanted to kind of show y'all the consistency of the potatoes. You definitely want a fork to be able to pierce through it, but you don't want to cook it so long that everything turns to mush when you start stirring it or else it will become mashed potatoes. But now in a mixing bowl, I'm going to get started on the dressing, which is a half a cup of mayo, a cup of sour cream, and either a packet of ranch seasoning mix, or if you're using a bottle like me, it's three tablespoons. So I'm gonna mix that until it's really smooth. And I will say, it's been a while since I made this and I honestly forgot, but I think that either the dressing recipe needs to be doubled or use like half the amount of potatoes. So to be 100% crisp and approved, I just think it needs more of that creamy like dressing. But anyways, um, I've added my potatoes to the bowl. I've added my cheese and um, you can either do green onions or chives. I, of course, am doing the chives and I'm just going in with my spatula and getting all of that folded together. And then that cooked bacon, I just chopped it up and I'm just adding that over the top. And just for like presentation purposes, I'm going to add a little bit more cheese over the top. And I'm also going to add a few more chives. So not only does this look like really pretty, it is so delicious. And I promise you, if you take this to like any summertime cookout, Everyone is going to love you and everyone is going to be asking you for this recipe. It's just great. Topped it with some pepper and then here's the BLT. Um, just some toasted white bread. I put mayo on both sides, added lettuce, bacon, and then a seasoned tomato. Like to me, there's nothing better. This will always be a favorite and it's just such a quick, easy like lunch or dinner. And this potato salad paired so perfectly with it. This meal was delicious. Y'all, I have stumbled across one of the best crock pot chicken recipes. I have never seen or heard of this before, but I am so thankful that I gave it a try. This is going to be a salsa verde honey lime chicken, and I'm going to be using it to make some epic tacos. Needless to say, I'm really excited to share this one. So in the bottom of my crock pot, I added about two pounds of some boneless skinless chicken breast, and I'm just seasoning them up. I will have this recipe linked in my description box if you are interested in the exact measurements of these spices because I simply just cannot remember. Um, but we got a lot going on in here. We got some chili powder, cumin, salt and pepper, onion and garlic powder, and some smoked paprika. I'm pretty sure I covered everything. But I'm just going in there with my hands and I'm getting those chicken breasts tossed around, making sure that every inch of those are covered. And then I'm just going to rearrange that again to make sure that the bottom of the crock pot is covered. Now I'm gonna grab a jar of this Salsa Verde. This is the mild version. I have never bought this before. I've never tried it before. I honestly did not think that I would even like it, um, but I was reading the reviews on this recipe and it has so many great reviews, so I decided to just go for it. I also drizzled in a third cup of some honey. I did spray my measuring cup with some Pam so that it would slide out. And then I'm going to add the juice of two limes using my handy dandy little juice Producer. And then I'm going to add my lid on and I'm going to let this cook on low for about three and a half hours. So here we are after that time was up. My chicken is fully cooked and I'm going to get that removed out of the liquid onto a cutting board. I am going to let that chicken rest for just a few minutes before I go in and start shredding it, but I did go in with two forks, and as you can see, it is just falling apart so effortlessly, so incredibly tender. I had all of these shredded in less than two minutes, but I only showed two of the chicken breast because I just didn't want to bore y'all, but um, now I'm going to add all of that shredded chicken back on into this delicious sauce. I'm going to give it a really good stir, and then I'm going to add my lid back on, and I'm going to let that continue cooking on low for an additional 20 minutes. That way that chicken can really soak up that sauce. So while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and cook up this package of these uncooked flour tortillas. You guys told me about the Kroger ones and we have really been loving them. So thank you for that suggestion. So Here's that chicken once it is fully done, and I know that it doesn't look like anything much, but the flavors is just out of this world, I promise you. We served it up with some shredded cheese over the top, sour cream, lettuce, avocados with some dried cilantro, and I also have a couple extra lime wedges on the side to drizzle over it, and I just served it with some corn on the cob that I buttered up and then seasoned with that everything but the elote seasoning blend by Trader Joe's. 
These were definitely some of the best tacos that I have ever made at the house. We love that sweet and tangy combo. They were very well seasoned. It was cooked perfectly. And there is so many possibilities with this chicken. Like just to name a few, you could just serve it over rice and do like a burrito bowl. You can make nachos with it, um, enchiladas, burritos, like literally anything. And I guarantee you'll be happy with the results. It's most definitely a new family favorite recipe and the leftovers were just as amazing. Up next, I made a quick homemade beef stroganoff. And to be completely honest, I was not that excited about making this at first. But y'all, it a thousand percent exceeded my expectations. And it ended up being such a huge hit with my family. So I started off by cooking up one pound of ground beef that I had seasoned with salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. And then I just drained off any excess grease. Then I'm going to mix one packet of brown gravy mix with one cup of cold water. I'm going to pour that on into my skillet and as soon as that starts to heat up it will start to instantly thicken. Now this next ingredient is going to shock some of y'all. I added in a can of cream of mushroom soup. If you've been watching me you know this is a huge deal because I do not cook with this stuff. I used it once before years ago before I even started doing these videos and we did not like the texture of those mushrooms in it but I was reading like the detailed version of this recipe and the girl who wrote it is a lot like me when it comes to that and she said that in this particular recipe you don't even notice them and I can second that. I'm so glad that I used it. Now she doesn't call for Worcestershire sauce, but I threw some in. I knew it would complement it well. I have some water boiling in the background and I'm gonna cook up a half a bag of egg noodles. I did cut the amount of pasta in half from her recipe, just going by the comments and the fact that we like things saucy. And I'm really glad I did that. I thought the ratios were perfect um, and just the perfect amount of pasta for us. One bag of pasta is kind of too much for us. So anyways, lastly, I hit it with about a half a cup of sour cream and then I added in those cooked and drained egg noodles. I'm just folding all of that together. And then lastly, I'm going to hit it with some dried parsley, mainly for color. And that is it. Like this came together so quick. I love that it uses very simple ingredients. I feel that it is very kid friendly. I feel like my daughter loved this the most. She even asked for the leftovers of it the next day. That literally never happens. I served it with a side of peas and some garlic breadsticks, which complemented it very well. This is hands down a new family favorite and I highly recommend it to you guys. Lastly, we are having breakfast for dinner and I'm trying out a new breakfast casserole. As the side dish, it's going to have bacon, eggs, cheese, and some frozen diced hash browns in it. So I'm going to start by cooking up the bacon. So I'm just frying up about six pieces. We like ours crispy. So once it reached that point, I removed it to a paper towel lined plate. To that same skillet with all of that bacon grease left in it, I'm going to add in half of a red bell pepper that I diced into small pieces. I did season it with some onion powder, but if you like actual onion, dice up half of one and throw it in there instead. So I saute that for a few minutes, and once it started to soften, I added in a big spoonful of minced garlic, and I'm just gonna let that continue cooking for a couple more minutes. I will say I absolutely loved the addition of these um, bell peppers in there with the garlic really elevated this dish and especially cooked in that bacon grease like such great flavor so i move that to a separate little bowl with a slotted spoon let it cool down and in this mixing bowl I cracked in six eggs. I'm adding in half a cup of milk and I'm just seasoning this mixture with some salt and black pepper and I'm going to move my whisk and I'm going to whisk that together really good. Then I'm going to add in the bell pepper and garlic mixture as well as these diced hash brown potatoes. I left them frozen and I'm measuring out one and a half cups of those. I know it doesn't sound like a lot but it really stretches in this casserole. Um, I'm also going to add in about a half a cup of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese and just a little bit of that bacon. I'm reserving most of it for the topping here in a little bit. So I'm getting all that dumped out into a greased 8x8 casserole dish. I'm trying to distribute those potatoes a little bit better. And then I'm going to top it with about another half a cup of the shredded cheese. I baked that at 350 for 20 minutes. So here I am pulling it out. It's about halfway baked at this point. I'm going to top it with the remainder of that chopped bacon. And once I got 
it arranged to my liking, that's going to go back in the oven for an additional 20 minutes. So while that's baking, I'm going to make some homemade biscuits real quick. So I got my white lily self-rising flour. I'm measuring out two cups of it. I'm going to be using one stick of salted butter that is really cold. I actually did stick it in the freezer for about 15 minutes prior. I would have done it for longer, but didn't think of it. So I do like to get it started by slicing it into thin pieces. And then I'll go in and chop it basically into four pieces per slice, if that makes sense. Then I'm going to add that into the flour. And I'm not good at this pastry cutter thing. I've only used it a few times, but every time it just seems like it doesn't get the job done. I don't really like it so far. I just think it's easier to go in with a fork or even my fingertips is what works best to cut that butter into the flour. I do love me a good buttermilk biscuit. So that's what I'm going to be using for the liquid. I did like a heaping cup of it and I'm going to stir that with my fork just until it comes together. It's not going to form like a dough ball here. It's going to be a really crumbly mixture. I'm going to get my work surface floured. I've always done it on a piece of parchment paper because I'm weird about working on my countertops, but I have decided this is my last time I'm going to do it on a piece of parchment paper because it was just a major pain. It was wanting to stick. It was moving everywhere. I'm just done with it. Uh, I guess my biggest thing is like where I spray my countertops with Lysol spray. I'm assuming if you wanted to work on it, you would just do like Dawn dish soap maybe and some hot water to clean that. I mean, I'll look into it, but that's what I'm assuming. But anyways, I don't use a rolling pin or anything because I do like good thick biscuits. Um, I used to use a mason jar that works really good if you don't have a biscuit cutter, but now I have the biscuit cutters and this is about how thick I want it. So I got all of those laid out on a silicone um, lined baking sheet and that's going to bake at 450 degrees. Mine took around 14 minutes. I don't know if you can tell, but these are on the bigger side. Um, so it took a little bit longer than normal and I wanted to get the tops a little bit browned, um, but those turn out good every single time. So we are going to be doing some pork chop biscuits. Um, if you are local, these are some Uncle Charlie's pork chops. And I'm just searing those in some olive oil and using this Mr. or Super Blend is what it's called. A Super Blend seasoning. It's basically salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. And a couple other things. Um, but yeah, there's my pork chops. I'm going to lay it on those soft, fluffy, buttery biscuits. And here is how that casserole looked like once it came out of the oven. You definitely want to let it like rest for at least five minutes before you cut into it. That way you can get nice slices. But here's my plate. Everything turned out amazing. Definitely love the casserole. I will say next time I would add some more seasonings, especially once you add the potatoes, like at least some garlic powder, but really good. Um, I ended up drizzling it with some hot sauce after this clip and that really made it even better. But that is all I got for today's video. I hope there was at least a couple recipes in here that caught your eye. It's always my goal to try and help with meal planning, but if you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a great and safe weekend, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye, guys.